All right, the snow's falling, guys, but we're gonna make a video of these zoom lock fittings, these push fittings. I've been waiting to use them for a while and finally getting to this now. I got a box here of some fittings. I think they're mostly half inch, half inch elbow. There's a coupling right here. And there's an install kit, which looks kind of cool. And then there's a removal tool. So we're gonna dig into this a bit deeper and figure out how these things all work. All right, so I grabbed one, took it out of the packaging, and just by holding it, you can tell it's a quality made fitting. It's got some real weight to it. There's a yellow cap on either end, which protects the fitting when you're not using it. So we pull those off and then on the inside, you can kind of see what is in there and how it may grab and how it may seal. So I'm going to open up the install kit. We're going to have a little bit of a read and we're going to put one of these on a piece of pipe and see how well it holds. All right, so here's the install kit here. Let's open this up and see what it's all about. So in the install kit, we have a zoom lock depth gauge. We've got a Sharpie and we have some scratch pad or some rough padding to clean up the pipe. So we're going to use these three with a piece of pipe and see how this fitting fits on. Okay, so I've went ahead and done one before I show you guys, just so I can get some practice. Now you can see how clean the pipe is on either side. Now there's also a mark here that I made with the Sharpie right there. Now, after I clean this, I put it in this, this pipe stop or pipe gauge or depth gauge and marked it where it went into this. And then that mark is there because when you push this fitting on, you're gonna wanna line up the end of the fitting to the marking to make sure it's on all the way. And that's what I did. And I'm not able to take this off. So let's go through that with you guys right now. All right, guys. So I got my Navac tubing cutter and reamer. Reamer is super important. We're gonna cut a piece of pipe off this roll here because these fittings can be used with hard copper and they can be used with soft copper as well. So that gives you an advantage out in the field if you ever need to use these. So we have this cut, we're gonna ream both ends Okay, and then we're gonna use a scratch pad to clean it, and it cleans very well. So you can see how well that cleaned the pipe. All right, so here is the, the depth gauge. So we're gonna use the appropriate hole, stick it in there, right? There's the appropriate hole right there. We're going to use the Sharpie the Sharpie actually says zoom lock on it. And we're gonna mark that right there. So we can see that marking right there. All right, so now we're gonna grab a fitting and put it on here. Okay, something I gotta show you here. This fitting here is 410A optimized. The first fitting I did was not. Now you can see there's a clear difference in the way they look. This one here is removable. Now there's a, a remover kit that it came with. We can check that out later, but just so you guys know, 410A optimized, which is non-removable. And this one here is not optimized for 410A, which is removable. So there's a clear difference on the two types. Okay, so this is the 410A optimized fitting, and we're gonna put this on this pipe that I've already marked and cleaned. So we're gonna, there's the mark right there. And let's push this on until we get to that point. So we've reached our mark. That mark is totally hidden. That means we've gotten to it and I cannot pull that off. So what I'm going to so do is I'm going to build sort of a contraption out of this. I'm going to braise in a tap so we can pressurize this just to see what um, we can hold at. Now my nitrogen reg does not go up to 870 PSI, which it states on there. So we'll go as high as we can and then do a pressure test with these. All right, so I have this contraption made up. I've got three elbows on there, 410A optimized and one coupling. Now I notice that you can actually turn these, okay? Which could be an advantage during an install because being able to move these after you've installed them could be an advantage if you have to turn a pipe or maneuver something into place. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna braise one end closed, put a service fitting on the other end and pressurize this and see if we can get any soap bubbles 
and check it later on to make sure the pressure's not dropping. Here is the removal tool. There's the bag there. That's what it looks like, removal tool. And it comes with this wire and these plastic pieces. I'm not entirely sure how to use that yet, but we'll figure that out and we'll try to remove one of the other fittings that's not 410A optimized in a little bit. trying to track down my nitrogen reg so we can get some pressure onto this thing. We got a full tank of nitrogen right here that will be able to get some good pressure on this contraption. All right, the ends are all sealed up. And we just got this thing hanging here on a bottle of R22. Let's pressurize it and see what happens. Okay, I've got all these soaped several times and not seeing any bubbles coming from the fittings at all. My pressure has been dropping, but this is why you gotta replace your hoses every once in a while. Look, I got a leak. This hose is probably over 10 years old. So I got a leak right there and I'm gonna have to replace this hose to continue. Okay, so I've come into the HVAC dungeon here. It was getting cold outside at the van. You can see the remnants of my last video on the whiteboard here. Now, since we've came in, look, look at our pressure. This is nitrogen, we've creeped up. 10 PSI. Reason being, we were cold outside. It was around, I would say, just under 30 degrees Fahrenheit. In here, we're about 70 down in the, the HVAC dungeon. Now, I've soaped all of these. There's zero bubbles coming out of these fittings. And we have gone up because nitrogen, in fact, does change with the ambient temperature. We were cold outside. We came in, we're warm. That pressure's creeping up. So we're going to leave it for a bit, let everything stabilize. And we're going to see what pressures we're at in a little while. But like I said, zero bubbles coming out of these fittings with my soap. Okay, we're still hooked up to the contraption here. We have three elbows and one coupling, 410A optimized. Now, I showed you guys outside. There was no bubbles coming from them. All right, and I showed you where the leak was. It was in my hose. There's zero soap bubbles coming from any of these fittings. When I changed that hose out, everything was good. Now, what tells me what's happening here is these gauges. So for the last hour and three minutes, we have not dropped in pressure. This, the way this works is the 557's pressure test function is we start, we, we hit mode, then we hit the play button, it starts a timer, it gives you your starting pressure, and it gives you the pressure you're at now, and the differential is right here. So we've actually, if, if, it, we, if we drop, there'd be a minus here, but there's no minus because we've actually gone up. Now I did show you they started to creep up once we came inside. Okay, that's, that's normal because nitrogen does change pressure with temperature, plus there was probably some air in here as well. Now, if there was any leak whatsoever, whatsoever, this is a small contraption, okay? It's very small. If there, was, if there was a small leak in here, we would notice it right away on the gauges, even a small one. Now, when you're leak testing a big system, it takes a while for you to see that drop in pressure because there's a lot of there's a lot of real estate in that system and and it takes a lot of pressure to remove itself from that system before you see an indication on a gauge there's very little real estate here if we lose a little bit of nitrogen that's going to change what it reads on our gauges all we've done is gone up that's all we've done we've gone up we have not dropped whatsoever it tells me these fittings are holding 413.6 PSI. Now, they're stamped on it, they're rated for over 800 PSI. Unfortunately, I can't go that high with my reg and I can't test that, but I know for now that we're holding this. So yes, would I use these? Um, I would use these knowing the fact that we are holding over 400 PSI at the moment. And these were so simple to install. Very, very simple. You just have to have a clean pipe market, push it on, and you're good to go. And I think these would work in a lot of applications where you can't light a torch, you have a tight space or something like that. So success so far. And as far as the removal goes, I think we'll do that in another video because this video ended up being a little bit longer than I thought. So on the next video, we'll figure out how to remove the, the fittings that are not 410A optimized. Happy HVACing.